Zergs are stopped playing because alliances in Throne and Liberty got out of control. Now, the game at its core had me completely hooked. The graphics are gorgeous. The main story quest is engaging. The PvP is fun. And this MMORPG actually feels like an MMORPG. After months of grinding and fighting, we got to, we got to try out the final piece of content. The tax delivery missions, a.k.a. Uh, a caravan PvP event. By now, the servers and the players had seen many battles, both online and offline. Politics game was strong, and most people referred to the game as Game of Thrones, mainly because of the sheer number of people moving between guilds and then guilds moving between alliances. Holy sh! All I see is a sea of red. As man. with any game without hard limits, the stronger just got stronger, and the stronger just got bigger. A potential four to five way alliance became a one versus one alliance. And this happened on most servers. You basically ended up seeing half of the server on one side of the alliance and half of the server on the other. Now, at the start, honestly, it was genuinely fun because there was just huge battles everywhere. Okay, so back to the PvP caravan event I was talking about. PvP caravan events are just awesome in any game, except Throne and Liberty, if you're against a team, they will just block that content from you. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get a recording of this, but the TLDR is this. The event started. Everyone started fighting. You, you pick up a golem, and then the golem moves from one location to the castle. About 100 meters away from the start, what happened is one server-side alliance just cannibalized this piece of content. <clears throat> now, obviously, the idea is that they... they um, take the caravan from the village to the castle, but that only affects four guilds. Now, what happened with the alliance is this, there ended up being 15, 20 guilds within this alliance. And what they said was, if we get contested, instead of taking the caravan to the, to the castle where you get the majority amount of money, we'll just kill it ourselves, and then the money's shared between the guilds. So, yeah, that was, that was, that was pretty bad. And ultimately, that, that led to the denial of content for the other half of the server. Now, the other half of the server, which I was on at that point, uh, wasn't as big as the other side, um, but we definitely wanted to fight. We, we, we tried to get in there and fight, but with the sheer amount of numbers of their, the enemy players, you just couldn't get near it, you know. So we wanted to try and get involved in the event and try to have fun, but yeah, content just got denied. And at that point, it was, it was kind of a tipping point for me personally. Now, at this point, some changes were actually announced by the devs, but unfortunately, we're not coming into effect for a few months. Um, and again, that just solidified my decision that th this, this, this really was enough. Um, and yeah, I kind of stepped away from TNL at that point while we wait for either the big patch, either global, or potentially the next big thing. The changes that make me think they will sort out the majority of the Alliance Zergen issues are that a lot of the open world PvP will now be kind of randomized to some extent so when you when you join an event there'll be kind of two or three factions and you you get randomly put into a faction and then you'll you won't get to see who the enemies are but you will be you won't see their nameplates in their guild so it'd be kind of like you may f you may be an ally of mine but you will have to fight me for example the riftstone and the boonstone pvp is also changing instead of just an all-out royal rumble and everybody versus everybody it will be a guild v guild scenario I think later on they're bringing out uh, an alliance v alliance scenario as well. Alliance is officially four guilds. There is a chance that this tax delivery and the siege will still be kind of cringe. Um, but one of the big suggestions I have for fixing that issue would be to remove the watch list and a hostile list. Essentially what you can do is mark guilds purple or orange. But people are essentially artificially creating lists out of these colors to show who is in their alliance and who maybe is not, for example. Uh, ultimately, going from a four guild alliance to a 50 guild alliance if you wanted to. My suggestion would be to remove this completely because, yes, okay, you can still create a 50 guild alliance, but me as a one guild, one guild on my own, I could join this siege battle and just change to the same colors or on the same flag as you, and it will create utter confusion for sure. Okay, maybe they'll, they'll know our names off by heart at some point, but... For the vast majority of the time, you look for icons, you look for uh, colors, you look for things that you recognize. Hey, this is an allied icon. Let's not attack that. 
So that could be a good way to fix things. Again, it might not stop it overall, but it would it would create uh, animosity. It will create confusion. It will create issues within these large alliances, which would someone like me on a, on a smaller scale, for example, would love the ability to do that. So that might that might help that situation. So here we are. To be honest with you, the game is fantastic, but it's it's in a rough place, and that's mainly caused by the zerging. The global bait has happened in this month where we're going to get a chance to test the EU pings and let's be honest to see if AGS is doing anything to address the issues that we've seen on the Korean launch. I'm assuming they've been watching it. I'm assuming they've been discussing it. So it's going to be very interesting to see if they have done anything. Now, I know it's NDA, you know, but let's let's see. Um, and until then, we are going to be playing Once Human. Once Human beta is happening as I'm recording this, so probably live by the time you see this video. We'll be playing the Once Human beta. This is an FPS MMORPG because it has TNL like elements. You capture a base, you then get access to a boss and resources. It's pretty big, actually. There is guild raids, boss raids, dungeons, it looks like. It's pretty, looks pretty cool. So I'm going to be giving that a try. Pax Day Alpha is happening, and then that's going into early access. And then, of course, of course, I'm super excited for Ashes of Creation Alpha 2, which, yes, I've paid my fucking money to get into that thing. <laughs> anyway, as always, thank you for watching. Sorry I haven't been uploading as much. Um, appreciate you checking out the video.